for me, your bench press is really impressive. Like considering your weight, uh, that's crazy. Like what is your bench uh, one rep max? 140 uh, on uh, almost 67, 8 kilograms, something like this. But I also put a lot of effort over there. It was not coming just from calisthenics. So I was training bench press for three uh, three years, uh, but not so much consistent one time a week, but still enough to get to this type of results. Mm -hmm. Did it help you with your planche progress? That's a really, really interesting and common question. People ask me so much about it, but uh, I'll not make so much connections between uh, those of the, uh, those two skills. I'll give you an example. 2017 uh, was the time in which I already had a strong planche. I already had 36 seconds of a full planche, and I went to the gym and I had a uh, 100 or 90-something uh, bench press. So you see, it was nothing so much impressive. Of course, it influenced somehow. Uh, of course, it had some um, pluses. It gave some pluses for the bench press, but uh, I can say I put it a lot of effort after that to really bring it to 140. And uh, in order to really compare it, we need to look at the position of the body when performing both of the skills. So in a planche, you have a protraction. While in a bench press, you have a retraction. You open your chest. So basically, the two moves, even though they both are push, they're really different. So uh, they don't have so much connection. And that's why they're also... Um, uh, not helping each other so much. You can be you can be a really strong plancher, but still be weak in a in a bench press. And and I see a lot of guys who are really strong in a planche, but hardly benching ninety. Yeah, which ninety is still a lot if we consider the average person. Yeah. Is it the same thing with planche push-ups? Because it's it's like more more the movement. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, because in a planche push-up, if you're especially performing them with protraction all the time, because there are two ways to do a planche push-up. Many say this is wrong or this is uh, right. You can't say if it's wrong or right. You can say which one is harder or easier. But uh, the most common way that uh, you see planche push-ups are done is by keeping the protraction all the time. So when you're down in your lowest point, you're having a protraction. When you're in your highest point, you're still having a protraction, which is exactly the opposite of the bench press, where all the time over there with a the retraction. Yeah, you can also perform the planche push-ups by protracting on the top and retracting yourself in the bottom. But that means that you need to make one additional move, which is the transition between the retraction to protraction somewhere hidden inside the push-up. That's something that a lot of people are not having in fact and, uh, you know, and are really not looking at it, but it's a really great factor. And is the bench press anyways uh, an exercise which you would recommend to calisthenics athletes to supplement their, their workout with? Or is it just because you no. like it and you enjoy Not it? at all. Not at all. You know, you can always add it, uh, even if it's not helping yourself directly. If it helps you mentally just to desertify your trainings and to really put something more interesting into your trainings, then go for it. Because sometimes there are things that are not directly affecting your goals but they're helping you just because you start feeling better. You know, you're not getting bored from a planche, planche, and planche because if you're totally focused on planche, it doesn't mean that you get stronger in a planche. You know, sometimes you need to be sure that you're having some things that are uh, making the training program a little bit more interesting, whether it's dynamics, whether it's some uh, fitness work, whether it's legs, whether it's uh, even something outside the sport. Mm -hmm. So this is more about enjoying and not, not losing consistency, not losing, losing yeah. the fun. And uh, also this topic leads me to something else, which is don't be dependent on one thing. So, for example, if you're having a lot of hobbies or you, for example, like doing legs or you do, you have a lot of interest. When you're in a situation like this in which you can't perform your planche anymore, you're not going to be that. You're not going to be totally dismotivated. It's like sitting on a chair that has only one leg or sitting on a chair that has four or even more legs. And I recommend having a lot of legs. Because if you have only one leg, you'll be unable to be planching and you'll be not sure where you're going in your life. That's why you need to have a lot of broad, broad interest in life, whether it's even uh, your, uh, whether it's only sport interest, whether it's outside the sport, like even a lot of goals in order to be sure that you're not going to risk it all. Yeah, it's true. It's uh, definitely true. And uh, for example, not falling into depression with uh, such an injury is, is really important because if you depend your whole life on, on and your identity is I am the planche man, you know, as it could be with you, but you also have the coaching. You also have like yeah. more things in life, which is really important in such a situation. Um, on the other hand, 
I see a lot of people, it's this, uh, the question, in my opinion, are you a generalist or are you a specialist? Um, and uh, a lot of people out there have difficulties on choosing for one path, like we talked already in the beginning, that um, choosing for one path in, in, in some point of, in life is important. When you're 40, let's say, you should have found your path in life and um, you should, should know what you're going after and where you put your focus on. Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, uh, it's important to also not go for too many uh, legs of the chair, so yeah. if you know what I mean. Uh, because it's getting to the other problem that we discussed uh, earlier. Because if you have a lot of things that you're doing, you're basically not a specialist into any, and you can't be the best at any. So what I meant is more like, okay, my direction is sport, but I'm not mainly dependent on my sport performance. I'm not gaining money mainly from competing, because if I got that thing mainly from competing, I'm just finished. You know, yeah. you need to be sure that you're having a lot of, let's say, sort of interest, sort of income, just to be desertified among different uh, uh, different uh, things, mm -hmm. but not That's too true. much desertified. Yeah, it's uh, always has uh, its own borders. Yeah, its own borders. That's true.